Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and in spite of this guy being kind of in the way, <laughs> I got my alpaca finished. And there were some major boo-boos while I was working on it. It should have gone really fast. I didn't even really paint her, except for the eyes and a little bit around the, the nose. I did put a little bit of a glaze to lighten up the paper mache clay, but that was really pretty much it. I've had problems with foam eyes before, and I thought this time I had it figured out how to cover it with something else, and that would that would be okay. And it turned out it wasn't, but I didn't find that out until the very last second, just before I was ready to put these eyelashes on. The other thing I did was uh, I bought myself a present. These are really big set of brush pens and I didn't like that. Since this isn't a review of the brush pens, I'm going to skip most of that and just show you how the eyes turned out <laughs> after I fixed them with acrylic paint. I'll just, I just painted over it. But other than that, <laughs> I think she's pretty cute. And um, I'll, I'll, let me show you how I did it. I did add just a little bit more of the paper mache clay to the front of this lady. She has a smile in the screenshots from my video and I wanted to try to reproduce it and it wasn't quite catching it before so I just added a teensy bit of paper mache clay while you weren't looking. And now I'm going to try an experiment on the eyes. I'm going to try to make that do-it-yourself gesso. I've got a recipe for it on my website but it's just drywall joint compound and glue. The only joint compound I have right now is the DAP drywall joint compound and we know that that doesn't work with Elmer's glue but I do have some of the Gorilla wood glue and we know that we can make paper mache clay with it so it should work for this mixture too. And I'm, I only need a little, the, re the reason that I'm actually trying it is because um, I, I want to make some fur marks on the ram. And if this works that should be a really good way to make the fur marks without um, you know, without buying any extra stuff. Whoops, that's probably too much. There's no actual recipe for this. I don't want it to be real thick. I don't want it to be real juicy. So I think that's that should work. And I'm gonna try to find a real old worn out brush. I'm not gonna use this brush on her because I want a nice smooth eye, but I do wanna find out if this mix will work as fur. So I'm just gonna use my old chip brush. It's kind of beat up. I think that could work on the on the ram, like just on his face where he's got pretty strong fur marks. I'm happy with that. So let's get out my soft brush. So I'm trying to put it on there real smooth. So now I just have to let it dry. It shouldn't take very long. I'll put it in front of the furnace vent. I took it out to the garage and sprayed it with this stuff and I was able to spray it without any damage. And the only reason I did that is because I'm going to put a glaze over this. I didn't want it to soak into the paper mache clay. I don't know. This is a, a total experiment so assume that whatever I'm doing now is just for fun. I don't know if it's going to work or not. The next thing I'm going to do, put the white gesso just on his eyes. Her eyes, sorry. It's just because I want a nice white. I, I didn't have to. Obviously, it already had the do-it-yourself gesso on there. Now what I want to do is lighten her up just a little bit, but still leave some of this color showing. This part is the um, the older wool. They just didn't give her a haircut on top, so, so she'd be cute, I'm sure. But they did give her a haircut everywhere else, and she just didn't have very long wool on her face. So everything else is actually quite light, and this is a little bit darker. She doesn't really need to be painted exactly because this is really wool colored, but it's not quite light enough for most of it. I'm going to use some satin glazing liquid and a tiny touch of white paint. I'm going to mix it up in this little container. <laughs> And then I'm going to brush it on. I do have two paper towels ready. One of them is dry and one of them is damp and that way I'll know that I can take it off if I need to. And I did spray it like I said so it shouldn't soak in. So let's go ahead and get started. This keeps it from drying out too fast so you don't end up with streaks when you're uh, putting a glaze. It just works a lot better than just water but you can use water if you want to. And I'm going to start out on the bottom at the back, <laughs> just so I can see if I like it or not. Okay, that's way too light. Well, I don't know, is it? 
Wait, let me see. It's actually really close to what color she is. The problem with the glazing liquid, in fact, the only problem that I know of, is that it is white until it dries, and then it's clear. So it's, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to know exactly what color you're putting on. But I think this is working, and I'm I'm trying to just hit the tops with just so it shows just a little bit of the the yellows underneath, and I'm hoping that it's close enough in color that it'll blend together really well. If it comes out the color that it is now, I'm going to be happy with it. I put it in front of the furnace vent to dry it off, and it's really subtle, a little bit almost too subtle. This, this part's dry and this part isn't. So I'm going to add just a little bit more white, and then I'm going to cover the rest of her. I'm trying to not put hardly any on the top knot. Just just a little bit to you know look like sun catching it or something. Now if it doesn't change color too much as it dries, it's really bringing out some nice texture. The scary part for me is uh, going to be the eyes and right around her nose because she's got some uh, really light gray in on the uh, screenshots that I got, it almost looked like her nose right here was gray with a teensy bit of purple in it. Now I'll put her back in front of the furnace vent. Okay, now I'm going to do something I have never done before, and the only reason is that I bought myself a present. <laughs> These um, brush pens. It was the cheapest set I could find. Though I've played around with them a little bit, and the one color that I really never intend to use is the black because it smears no matter how long it's been on there, it never seems to dry. Okay, I'm not happy with these things. I know it's just because I'm not using them right, but I don't know. Trying to soften the edges of that shadow um, just by dipping my brush in the glazing liquid and kind of mixing it in with the paint that's already there. I've never done that before, but let's see if it works. I just want a hint of gray in this area. This is where Nisa's nose seemed to have uh, almost violet gray, and I'm, I'm not brave enough to try that. <laughs> I was going to quit, but I'm going to just put some real burnt sienna on those eyes. Okay, now I'll let it dry. I went back to the photos of Nisa and decided that this was just too dark. So I'm just um, covering it just a little bit, just softening it up with the, the the white and glazing liquid that I used for the rest of her. And it's still bleeding, so I don't like this stuff anymore. 
Can't use those pins. I sprayed it one more time and now I'm just putting some fingernail polish over her eyes. The rest of it was sprayed with that matte finish and so this is the only part that's going to be shiny, which is going to be cool. You saw me put the do-it-yourself gesso over the eyes, which I thought would protect the foam from the spray paint because I know the spray paint will eat the eyes. And I sprayed it twice after that, once just with that do-it-yourself gesso on there. And then I put the acrylic gesso over the eyes. And then I put, after I messed around with those <laughs> brush pants, I put the acrylic paint over it. I sprayed it again with the sealer, no problem. But this was a big problem. <laughs> you saw me put it on there. Um, and it ate through all those layers on one eye, but not the other one. Now, why would that happen? What did I do different? I have no idea. I know that some of you have told me that you do paint directly over the foam. But if you also use the nail polish, Please let us know how you do that because it definitely didn't work for me. I don't show you how I fixed it because I didn't want you to see how horrible it looked. It was really, really horrible. It, it, oops, sorry, guy. Um, it just ate into the the foam and, and just it was really awful. So I kind of re-sculpted it with some more drywall joint compound, let it dry, put some more on to get it smoother. It would have worked better if I had used some epoxy clay, but I didn't want to wait for a whole day for it to cure so that I could repaint it. But I might actually go ahead and do that because I never got it quite round again. I'll, I'll show you here from a distance. <laughs> I don't know if you can see your eyes or not. Um, they ended up looking fine. The eyelashes I'm not so sure about. Let me show you how I did that and then you can tell me whether or not you think I should take them off. <laughs> okay, we got some Halloween eyelashes. We want them to go down over her eye, not not up. Most of the lashes I've gotten before will stick pretty well just with the stick -um that they use to get it on the card. But this is not, that's not working very well with this one. So I'll get out the stuff that I claim I will never use again every single time I use it. And I'm just going to put a couple of drops of this super duper blue. It's supposed to go down this way. has almost no sticky on it at all. So Nisa is finished now. This guy is really getting in the way. I, I, I've been working on this guy for so long. And I've got so many other projects that I've been doing that he's just... This I'm going to finish him this week. I promised him I would. Let me show you what the original, actual, live Nisa looks like right there. And you can tell me whether or not you think I caught her. <laughs> I was trying to do a portrait, so I, I think it's pretty close. But there's a lot of things that I would not do again. Obviously, you watched me do them. <laughs> if you're interested in how the do-it-yourself gesso works as fur on the ram, um, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. Or go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter. It's a, a day late this week because I was messing around with Nisa. But, <laughs> um, but it usually comes out on Friday. Uh, it's an email newsletter. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe to it. I'll put a link to it down below. Now go make something and then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.